SCP-001. The following files have been classified top secret by order of the administrator. General Notice 001-Alpha. In order to prevent knowledge of SCP-001 from being leaked, several or no false SCP-001 files have been created alongside the true file or files. All files concerning the nature of SCP-001, including the decoy or decoys, are protected by a mimetic kill agent designed to immediately cause cardiac arrest in any non-authorized personnel attempting to access the file. Revealing the true nature or natures of SCP-001 to the general public is cause for execution, except as required under... SCP-001, The Foundation, Unusual Incidents Unit File 0041, Altered High School Building in <laughs> Confirmed Anomaly 3, Object Class 53, Highly Intrusive, Unknown Capabilities, Unknown Nature, Secure Containment Protocols, the following protocols have been removed from the report. Confirmed Anomaly 3, or CA-3, is to be surrounded by an electric fence no less than 30 feet high and guarded by the United States Army's platoon. Any footage or photographic evidence of CA-3's interior is to be excised as soon as possible and all witnesses detained indefinitely. This ends the removed portion. Under no circumstances should any personnel attempt to enter CA-3 or communicate with the persons inhabiting it. However, any person known to have been inside CA-3 at any point must be detained and interrogated. A direct military assault on CA-3 has been deemed unfeasible at this point due to unknown capabilities of the entity or entities by which it is controlled. Note, this is a summary and does not contain all information relevant to CA-3. For detailed information regarding CA-3, see UIU Files 0042-0218. through 0218. Director Known Information The Unusual Incidents Unit was alerted to CA-3's existence on September 7, 1954, when students attending high school reported that the interior of the building was vastly different than it had been at any point in the past. Upon discovery, CA-3 exhibited several unusual, if not inherently paranormal, traits. Nearly all walls in the facility had been replaced with steel-reinforced concrete although several rooms were constructed of other materials for no readily apparent reason. All exterior windows had been covered from the inside. All student desks, personal effects, textbooks, and other materials expected of a public high school were completely absent. Lockers were still present, albeit significantly smaller and constructed of stainless steel. The arrangement, location, and size of rooms and facilities did not match blueprints for the school. Often, rooms would exhibit seemingly random modifications, although the number of changed rooms is currently unknown. No fewer than 17 electronic computers were found, each of which made use of state-of-the-art magnetic core RAM. Prior to its classification as a confirmed anomaly, high school had no computers. All files on the computers were inaccessible, and the computers themselves are firmly bolted down. The auditorium is inaccessible due to a large steel wall completely blocking the doorway. Attempts to move or damage this barrier have been ineffective. The extent and purpose of the barrier are unknown, as are the contents of the auditorium. A team sent into CA-3's interior to do a complete survey, Team CA-305, did not return, nor did a second team, Team CA-306, 
tasked with locating the first team. The facilities are currently under a lockdown, pending new containment protocols. Update. 23 days after initial recovery, guards reported white noise emanating from CA-3, the volume of which increased near the auditorium. Five hours later, the white noise stopped, although the sound of voices was audible from the interior of CA-3. Upon further investigation, it was found that the building now contained a large number of persons, all of whom appeared to be wandering aimlessly through the facility. Notably, each individual was physically identical to a member of Team CA-306, despite the inhabitants of CA-3 vastly outnumbering the members of Team CA-306. Attempts to interview or detain the inhabitants were thwarted by classified. The 12 members of Team CA-305 were not found. In addition to the aforementioned, the interior layout of CA-3 had changed significantly since the previous investigations. No mechanism which could explain this has been identified. Update: Three months after the previous incident, white noise was again heard emanating from the auditorium. This time, the decision was made to investigate immediately. It was found that most of CA-3-2, the designation given to the inhabitants of CA-3, had gathered near the doors of the auditorium. A circular hole, roughly six feet in diameter, had formed in the steel barrier, although the interior was not visible. At 0310 hours, an item resembling a classified emerged from the hole and was carried away by an inhabitant. The item was placed in one of the classrooms, which had not previously been observed to open. This process continued for upwards of eight hours, with a new item being produced once every three minutes. Most were seen entering a different room or locker, although insufficient personnel were available to track all items. Further investigation revealed that most, if not all, of the items produced exhibited anomalous properties themselves. A significant portion of CA-3-2 are involved in either guarding the items produced, collectively CA-3-3, or performing various tests on them. Update. Two days after the previous incident, three identical armed guards appeared near each entrance to CA-3. Further attempts to enter the building were futile as these guards have consistently overpowered all teams sent to enter CA-3, regardless of injury or relative level of armament. Note: Reports gathered during the two days prior to the guards manifesting outside of CA-3 appear to confirm that CA-3-2 is following standard UIU protocol regarding the items produced by the auditorium. Their knowledge of UIU standard procedure is consistent with that of Team CA-305. Update. During the UIU's tracking of CA-6, two men identical to Agent Dixon, a member of CA-306, emerged from a parked car and forcibly detained CA-6, dragging him into the car and driving away. Tracking the vehicle for the next eight hours revealed that it was driving directly to CA-3. Upon arrival, the vehicle drove directly through the front doors, which the guards had opened shortly before their arrival. CA-6 has not been recovered. UIU File 0042 Message Received from CA-3 On May 15, 1965, the following message was transmitted in Morse code from CA-3 on standard UIU communication frequencies. Sensitive data has been classified, and the beginning of each sentence has been capitalized, but the message has not otherwise been changed. Hello, we are the O5 Council, and we, Secure, Contain, Protect. We have been shown to do it, and it would be nice to be friends. It is nice to have been a part of your excellent, but it is best that with superior resources given, the greatness, we will control containment. Our sincerest apologies regarding guards and detainment. 
lurkers and secrets kept needed. The time and waits we apologize. The radio blocked by one SCP or two. Expect an expansion soon, for we spaces were although away from auditorium. Okay, but unwant. Eight hours later, the following transmission was received. Expanded now. See the federal building. It is now a functional. Need doctors, guards, D-men recruiting. Anomalies found and further possibly international. Researching of course possible. International may be days, weeks to do. Further we 05 are aware. Sorry to 06 missed. That legible barely. But go between auditorium, not... <coughs> Goodbye and luck with your troubles. For further information, see UIU file 0... <coughs> Altered Federal Building in... <coughs> Confirmed Anomaly 10.